Hi there. My name is Corey Skye, and this is One Man's Journey to Becoming a Sexually Confident Alpha Male. Today I'm talking to one of my former clients that has come full circle in his own journey. We are going to be talking about developing choice with the women that you truly want and what it really takes to date multiple women at one time. It's strange. The, the first years uh, that I followed your program, um, I always was, um, ex my expectation were very high. Things really start happening when I just uh, was working on my mindset and working on um, the things that really holding me back. So uh, problems with uh, becoming older was uh, the main thing for me on that moment. Um, after doing all the stuff you told me to do, after one-on-one -on -one coaching and all those things. And uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, I became um, calmer and uh, more confident about myself. And then um, things really started to happening and uh, it was uh, more like a roller coaster on that moment. It, you said that you developed like a sense of calmness and confidence. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, yeah, it's, um, it, uh, my, my biggest problem was uh, to uh, always uh, with uh, younger girls. And it was not that I was uh, looking for or younger girl, but uh, I always um, was approached a lot by younger girls. And, but um, I didn't feel um, good about it. I always thought it was wrong. Uh, and, and, uh, and I didn't know where that came from. But I came from a place with uh, my parents were very Catholic and uh, I'm a grandpa and grant uh, also. So they always um, put me back when, when I came with younger girls to say, no, that's wrong, you cannot do that. And that's why a voice in my head always said, uh, um, it's not okay. And besides that, the problem that, um, that uh, most of the time, I didn't understand it on that moment, um, especially younger girls do that. They test you. And uh, when you're not that self-assured on that moment, um, they see right through you. Then I uh, collapsed. And uh, now I laugh about it because I I know that it's possible. I, I did it. Uh, many times and uh, now I know that it can be but at the time I didn't know that so uh, you think when you go home that um, that it will never happen and that it just isn't your time anymore that that was my biggest issue at that time I didn't fit mm -hmm. in anymore the thing about you know deep-rooted beliefs is that it's not just beliefs that are holding you back you it's your beliefs are actually creating your reality in the experiences mm -hmm. that you have i remember several conversations with you about how you went out and you met a girl and then you said something about your age and then instantly they weren't attracted to you that was literally a self-created experience that you were that you were manifesting time and time again that would basically solidify the deep-rooted beliefs that you had had and i i feel like this is a lot more common for guys than you would think i mean this is just one example of how 
your parents kind of you installed this deep rooted belief. But I mean, this happens to many guys in many different ways, you know, and, and that's the problem is, is once once a thought, once an experience, a situation uh, becomes a deep rooted belief, that's basically what you are going to continue reliving until you go in and, and reprogram that and accept that this is that it doesn't have to be this way. Yeah, that's right. Because um, the the way I thought about myself and the way I thought about society in common uh, made uh, made me uh, look uncertain for those girls, and uh, the fact alone about that is because I. I hadn't that confidence about uh, getting those girls because they were younger. They could feel it. Uh, they could feel that negative energy. And um, when things started getting better and uh, I was dating younger girls, uh, it became normal for me. And uh, from that time on, my energy changed. And uh, the, some girls even said that uh, they uh, they noticed it on me, girls that I knew before. And with them, uh, things also start happening. And um, when you do that for a while, it becomes uh, natural for you. And you become uh, self-assured about it. And uh, now it's really normal. I don't think it's strange anymore uh, to date younger girls. I even uh, are looking for older girls now because you can um, talk about some things better with them. I mean, if you're 53, you got that age range, you're going to be able to relate to them on a, on a deeper level of just experience, life experience alone. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with girls from, from in the 20s, and um, I date them too sometimes, but most the best uh, age for me, I uh, for my experience is uh, about uh, 26, 27 till 35, that, that range uh, suits me the best. I can talk with them about everything and works really fine. And girls which are below 25, it's not working out very well because they are, they are very childish, if you know what I mean. Right, right. But it's good, though, because at least you got to experience that and make that decision coming from a place of abundance, not a place of not being able to have it. Yeah. That's right. So one thing that you brought up earlier was you said something about how you felt like women were always constantly testing you before. After things changed and you had developed this sense of calmness and deep inner peace within yourself and became just more of a calm, confident guy, just a calm, confident, sexy guy. How has that changed for you with women testing you well they still uh, test me if i if women don't know me uh, they just want to know if you're really that uh, confident or of it just uh, just fake they just and that's why they want to test uh, you and um and now i'm um I'm calm in that, uh, in the sense of uh, that I'm not uh, rely on on their, um, as I say that, um, on the things that they say. When they say to me, like example, from you could be my father or something like that, um, and um, I don't uh, uh, argue about it anymore. I I just say. Uh, Okay, uh, uh, it's fine by me, and I laugh about it. And then they they 
they're still joking about it. But the strange thing is, after a couple of hours, and we are hanging out in the bar, and uh, I don't think at all when I'm uh, honest. I just let things happen, and I see what what's gone, and I never and I don't think about that girl anymore uh, because maybe I saw another girl or I made just fun with my friends. Then of a sudden we are uh, outside and then she is there uh, when we are uh, going to a place to eat. Suddenly she is there and uh, uh, she really lets you know that uh, she wants something from you. And um, so those things uh, uh, work out on a very natural way. And uh, so I uh, found out that I really don't care about your age. It is just, um, but now I know that when you are that unsure about your age, the reason for that is that I didn't care so much about it. I wasn't uh, thinking about the girl uh, anymore. And that made that uh, they know that you are uh, not only uh, for them there. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, once you once you develop that lifestyle, you develop a life, right? I mean, where you just don't give a fuck. Yeah. Um, yeah that's- you, and you don't. It's not that you don't give a fuck because you're just being a dick. It's be, it's you. You just don't give a fuck because you're living. <laughs> you have things going yeah. on. You might be going out with your buddies. You might be going out with a friend. You might be going out with another girl. You know. It's just you. You literally you have a life, so it doesn't matter. I mean, if it works out, cool. If it doesn't, cool. And mm. you know, that's that's one of the. It's one of the hardest things to convey to, you know, a guy that doesn't really have choice, you know, with women, kind of like you were in the beginning. It's really hard to convey that and explain that because it's like, well, yeah, it, it does happen naturally. Everything, it, everything kind of just everything does fall into place. But, and you're not really you're not thinking about it. You're not mm-hmm. you're not obsessed with it. You don't have this deep desperation and need to have this one woman into your in your life and that alone just gives you that sense of calmness and makes you more so much more attractive to women and i know a big part for you was the age thing but there's so much that you really have to face within yourself to develop that this level of confidence that we're talking about yeah. yeah and then you you uh you come on the point that you really don't care if a girl says that uh, she thinks you're too old because i like my age i i like my life now i'm i'm uh, i'm feeling uh, healthy again uh, all my issues uh, from my health are solved and that's a great feeling, and uh, um, I, like you said before, I look good, and I think so myself. And that's the only thing that's matter. And and, and if girls say, um, of when I say, that there are girls that I say I'm, I'm my age and uh, in their twenties, and um, after that they're gone. But um, I don't care about that. Maybe they would come back, I don't know, because I went to another bar. And uh, maybe I see them sometimes, but I don't care about that. It's uh, not uh, my main purpose to meet girls all the time, but I don't think anymore why they didn't come back. It it doesn't bother me. Right. You don't sit around and beat yourself up wondering what you did wrong. No, and I see it in a positive way. Uh, there, there are so many. There could be so many reasons why uh, uh, why a girl not come back. I, but I don't care about that because I'm not in their heads. I can only look in my own head. That's a really big thing, and it and it really comes down to really liking and loving you just as you are, and realizing yeah. that not everyone is going to 
vibe with you. Not everyone's going to love you. And that is perfectly okay because there are so many people out there that would love to be around you, that would love to hang out with you, that would love to to be with you. One thing that I'm I'm sure you've found, you know, just in the going from, you know, really struggling to, you know, having more of this, that abundance um, is like you said earlier, a girl will test you in a way yeah. where she'll say something just to kind of see if just see, to see how you would react kind of like your age. Right. And what's funny though, is once you develop this level of sexual confidence, you still get the tests. A girl will still test you, but there's a couple differences. Num- number one, you really just don't care. You know, mm-hmm. as a man, as the man, you really just don't care, right? We don't care. But then what also happens is you end up in a lot of situations where she'll say something about your age as if she doesn't like it, and or she'll say something about your height, or she'll say something about your nose or your weight. Or, or she'll say something that you, about the fact that you like fishing and she hates fishing. But then even in the midst of her saying things to you that she doesn't like about you, mm. she will still be with you. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> like it's, it, and, the, and this is kind of something that was always funny because I'd meet a girl that, oh, well, I usually date tall guys. Well, I'm not a tall guy. Yo, I usually only date Paul Gott. This is really weird for me. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, oh, I don't, I don't, you know, this is totally out of, she'll say, this is totally out of character for me. I don't usually sleep with guys on the first night. Like, I just, I just don't. It's just something that I've never done. But then she sleeps with me later that night. It's, it's almost like inevitable. It's bound to happen that she will pick out different things to, in it to compare me to like what she is used to and what she has liked in the past, the type of guys or whatever. And typically I'm not any of those, you know, I might have some of the qualities, but I definitely, I definitely don't have all of them. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but because I don't care and I love myself for who I am just as I am. And I have that attitude where you know, you like me, you do like me, you don't, you don't. Either way, good. It doesn't matter. So then even if it's completely out of character for her, even if it's like, you know, she's only dated, you know, models her entire life, she's still going to be with me. There's no limits to it. It doesn't matter your size. It doesn't matter your weight. It doesn't matter your age. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, an, it's a quality that is very rare among men these days. Yeah, right, dude. Uh, when you let's see that you are vulnerable and um, that you have your worries, uh, women really rely on that. I must, um, yeah, you're right on that. It's, um, but um, another thing is, uh, it, when I when I noticed that my age problem wasn't uh, uh, a problem anymore, um, I noticed that uh, women are looking for other things, uh, like you said. They try uh, uh, or, or your hair uh, or your, um, uh, of if you have um, uh, the wrong shoes, uh, anything. They just, um, I think, uh, when you through that, uh, like I did with my age, it doesn't matter what they say, but it is always something. Um, I did date a couple of uh, girls uh, um, uh, for a couple of months, and we just went out. We we didn't. Some, not something sexual, only kiss. And uh, they were looking for men. They were not uh, quite my type, and they know that. Um, but I listened to all the rubbish they said when uh, guys came in bars. And every guy they saw, 
they said about them, that guy was too old, that guy was too bold. And uh, and on a point, I start laughing about it. And um, I said it to them when we were going home in the car. And then they must laugh about it too, because they didn't even know that about themselves. When I asked them about it, they didn't even mean it. They just want to say those things about men. Uh, I don't know why, and they even themselves didn't know why. Because one of the bold men, and which they, before we went, they say never a bold guy. And one of them liked a bold guy when we went home. So then you see that everything is possible and girls really themselves don't know what they want. I mean, most of them will say they know what they want, <laughs> but then what typically will happen is, is once they meet a man that they connect with, when you have that level of sexual confidence, that calmness, you know, where, you know, you kind of enter into that bubble with a girl where everything kind of disappears, time stops and <laughs> Like nothing matters. Like it's like it's kind of like let's just say a woman says that she wants to marry a guy uh, that's rich and good looking and is a doctor and have kids and that's what she wants. That's what she says she wants. What happens is is she will start going out and she'll start looking for that. She'll date a few doctors. She'll date a few guys that are ultra rich. She'll date a few, you know, good looking guys or whatever. And then one day this guy will come along that has that higher level of consciousness, right? Uh, it's mm -hmm. kind of what we're talking about here. This higher level of sexual confidence, this deep sense of uh, inner clarity about who he is and what he is and what he wants. and he'll just look her in the eyes and he'll basically swoop her off her feet. Mm -hmm. And then she ends up falling head over heels for this guy. The funny part is, is this guy lives in a 1500 square foot house, doesn't have a pot to piss in, but it doesn't matter because a woman will always choose that connection over most, I, will, I, I can't say all women, most women will always choose that, that, that insane hot connection w over material things any day of the week. Yeah, I think that, that's right. Yeah. Because um, when you start living uh, with each other together, uh, you have to face uh, each other <laughs> all the time. It's almost impossible to do that if you do not have uh, that connection. Um, same as when you um, have a girl and you don't see her that quite often and you go on a holiday with her. When you don't have that connection with the girl and you have to stay a whole week in a hotel room with a girl, I, I faced that one time and... Uh, I saw all of girls uh, at that time. And then we really uh, got starting to know each other and it became really ugly uh, on that uh, time because we missed that connection. It was only um, physical. And uh, yeah. that's, uh, that doesn't work. That, uh, it was uh, a good looking uh, girl, but uh, after two days, you you don't care about that because uh, uh, she was mean to other uh, people and um, it was not a nice time. And uh, it is even a fact that uh, after that week, she didn't look so... Um, good uh, physical to me anymore because uh, it was not um, a girl with a great uh, personality. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, I mean, and that, that actually touches on a really good point 
is I talk to so many different guys that want to and develop this level of sexual confidence and and have more women in their life. But they're so fixated on these types of women based on their physical appearance. And I've never been that way. Okay. I mean, yes, I like a physically attractive woman, but you get to a certain level, a certain point where you start looking beyond the physical looks and, and valuing more substance and, and personality and character. And, and that plays a big impact on the type of women that you will attract and the type of women that you connect with as well. No, you're right because um, now I now I have those girls when I go out uh, it, and they and they they want to go with you or uh, they ask you to come with them to drink something or what. But um, um, it's very it's very strange. But on those those moments, you're not uh, sexually uh, um, there's no sexually arousal. Uh, when you um, meet a girl with which you have that connection, you don't think about all those things. It just happens. Uh, and it happens fast. Time goes fast. And one of a sudden, you, um, you're making out with, uh, with the girl. And uh, that's a huge difference, I must say. It's beautiful because, for one, it bypasses your own shit. Let's just say you have a lot going on or whatever, and you just, you know, in your life with work and whatever, you leave work, you, you say, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to go out and have fun. And you kind of let mm -hmm. all your inhibitions go. You don't, I mean, and it doesn't take alcohol to do it. That's what it's like being in that present moment, right? You know, mm -hmm. you, you let all your inhibitions, all your worries, all your doubts, all your insecurities, you just let it go and you're just there, you're present. And because you have let all your inhibitions go and you're in that present moment, you give her permission to let her shit go as well. And then yeah. that's what really allows you both to get, allows the magic to happen between the two of you, because you're just letting yesterday go and you're allowing tomorrow to worry about itself. And you're just mm -hmm. here. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's right. If it's only about the sex, it's, it's it never went uh, went good uh, by me. I I I need that uh, that connection with somebody, and it uh, doesn't matter if I'm going uh, for life with that person or just uh, for a week. But I need I need that connection anyway. When you live your life like we're speaking about being more in the natural flow of thing, living outside of your head and more in the present moment. And you're just feeling great with who you are, as you are. And, and even in the midst of the chaos of the day-to-day -day bullshit that we're all faced with, life is good. And, and when you have a connection like that with a woman, even if it even if it is only for only one night it's a beautiful connection because you live with the understanding that everything happens for a reason yeah. and you and i were brought here today for a reason i meet a girl she's there for a reason whatever comes out of it is not even fucking relevant yeah maybe that's Nothing yeah. comes out of it. Maybe we have just an incredibly deep conversation. Maybe we end up going and, you know, having sex floating down the river. Maybe we, you know, do something else just where we just roll around and laugh until we cry. And then I never see this, this girl again. She was brought into my life for a reason. And, 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 mm -hmm. and that is what you call deliberate creation that is you understanding that you are the creator of your own reality so many people will bitch about experiences that they have because it didn't go the way they wanted it to go i'm like mm -hmm. well 
It was your own fucking creation. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, can't, you can't order a burger and then bitch about the burger. You can't move into this yeah. house and then bitch about the house. It was your own creation. And this is, this, is, this is where a lot of people, I would say, really f- are fucking up right now is because we, we are all creators and co-creators mm-hmm. of the life that we live. And we sit here and we we are creating the experiences that we're having in our reality, but then we're bitching about them and hating on them. And then we're wondering why we're attracting more things that we don't want. Yeah, I really changed it in, uh, on, in that fact because now I just appreciate uh, the things that happen to me. And uh, I know sometimes I uh, met a girl and we only kissed and uh, it was a really nice girl. Uh, and some people around said, oh, did you only kiss with her? Why didn't you um, go all the way? I say, because it was, wasn't was uh, coming up my mind. Uh, it was good as it, as it were. And... Um, uh, um, Maybe she wanted more, but I didn't think about that. I just, uh, I just liked that moment, and uh, after that, I just went home. And every time when I see that girl, she is uh, coming to me and asking uh, to go with her. Uh, but every time, there is something uh, like uh, with my father uh, this year and. But uh, she understands that, and but it's good as as it is. That uh, that were uh, very uh, nice moments uh, with her, and I appreciate that. I mean, I'm far too familiar with that, especially mm-hmm. when you're out hanging out with your friends, and you yeah. know something happens with a girl like that, you know, and you maybe you just have a little talk, or you end up making mm-hmm. out, and then you you know nothing nothing comes out of it or whatever, and then you go back to your friends and your all your buddies are like, Oh, what the fuck, bro? Like, why didn't you go and take her home? You should have, Oh man, I would have done this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, shut the fuck up, bro. You have no idea. I, but, but those girls, you have something special. Uh, Sometimes it's not very long, but, um, you don't want to, um, to destroy that because it's so nice, it feels good, and you don't want to push it anyway. You just want to let it happen. And when you're going to push it only uh, for your friends, then you're not real anymore because you're doing you're not doing it for yourself or for her. You're only doing it for uh, for them and. Uh, I don't uh, do those things anymore. It just has to happen because I know, and uh, that happened many times, that you you will see uh, that girl again. And, um, and if it's not, uh, then it just uh, wasn't uh, the right girl for you. That That's what I think. Then it was not just the right moment for it. And uh, I'm uh, I'm good with that. That's an excellent place to be, Goswin, isn't yeah. it? If, I mean, the, the feel that feeling alone is yeah. worth everything. everything. <laughs> it really is a sacred moment, it's something to be cherished. And and unfortunately, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of guys, even a lot of women, don't get to experience this very often, if at all. Yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I talk with some friends of mine this evening. We had uh, some party here with my at home, and um, they never experience things like that. And uh, I think it's very strange. But um, when I tell them about this program, or when I tell them uh, um, what uh, what they could do about it. They think it's strange. They always think uh, you have to do certain things, and uh, they they never expect uh, that it is uh, it is that easy just to go to the gym, work on yourself, uh, do all the things uh, to get the right mindset. Uh, you know all the things we talked about a lot, but. Uh, they don't expect that it can be that easy and uh, they 
they always uh, ask me from what I said or what I did, but most of the times I just go out or just making fun with them and uh, have uh, other things on my mind than women. And uh, they just don't believe uh, me on that. And uh, some sometimes they, uh, they're, they're looking for a fight. I, I had that with some friends and... Uh, it's very, uh, you, you told me about that, and that that would be happened. And uh, I also lost uh, a lot of friends for, for that. But they, they always think uh, that you have to do certain things or that I do certain things or say certain things uh, uh, what make things happen. And uh, we both know that is not the case, but... It really, I mean, it really is unfortunate that so many guys are trapped, so so trapped in this this life where they're just constantly living in their mind, mm-hmm. analyzing and breaking everything down yeah. to the point where they have to figure everything out. I guess that's the thing is when you meet, when you come across those people and you, uh, we do it each and every day. It's kind of like one of those things where, like, I kind of feel sorry for them because it's not their fault. You know, I mean, society, you know, religion, our parents, uh, the education system, the economy, it it goes against everything that we're talking about here. And, you know, it it teaches us from a very young age it all teaches us from a very young age that you have to be very strategic and plan plan and plan and plan (laughs) about everything in your life and it's unfortunate because it really does take the magic out of the moment yeah that's right what you said what I what I found uh, the the most uh, beautiful moment uh, is when I realized um, um, that I had changed because you you don't uh, notice the change when you're um, living your life uh, and uh, doing uh, the program, doing all the things to uh, become better and better and. Um, in the, in the beginning, like I told, I had uh, these huge expectations and one of a sudden life goes on and you are still doing all those things and then becomes a moment and then you are changed and you, you really can feel that you are changed. And one of a sudden people are going to tell you that you are changed uh, and um, like you always said, don't try to analyze it like I did in the beginning. But, the mo- but uh, it's a really special moment when you you go out and you just um, just have fun and don't have uh, to do anything. And uh, things are going to happen for themselves. But what is even better is when uh, things don't happen on on an evening and uh, then you don't um, feel down about it anymore. You don't think about, I don't think about it anymore. I just go home and uh, watch a movie and go to bed. And uh, a week later, uh, there's another party. I go out and things happen again. It's... uh, it's no problem anymore. And that's a great feeling, I must say. And that's a big one for a lot of guys. Pretty much every guy I feel like I've ever worked with is um, that constant beating yourself up, yeah. thinking that you're not getting better and thinking that your life's always going to be the same and thinking that they're constantly beating yourself up, thinking that there's something wrong with you uh, because you're going home alone. It's, that's a terrible place to live. Yeah, and for all those guys who, uh, who uh, 
were in that situation, I can tell them that um, don't uh, think too much about it and uh, just uh, think on uh, the things you can do when you go home, the things that you have in your life, the things that are good in your life and the things that you, you can do on, right on that moment uh, with your friends, uh, with which you are out. Uh, all those things or the things that you can do when I didn't uh, meet a girl, I think, oh, that uh, is a great uh, opportunity to go out to the gym in the morning. And um, it's very strange because you go working out and once all of a sudden you meet a girl in the gym. And uh, because yeah. you're, not, you're still in <laughs> That's that exactly how it happens. <laughs> that's exactly the type of things that happen but it's like if you go out and then you go home alone and then you're beating yourself up and then you go to the gym next morning and you're still beating yourself up there's i mean nobody nothing's gonna happen but if you stop beating yourself up you go out with the sole purpose of just to have a great time and have fun and just be with your friends and allow yeah. things happen and enter into that moment and you know that's where the magic happens and then you're almost uh, glad that it didn't happen um, that evening because uh, now you uh, meet this wonderful girl in the morning. Uh, you wouldn't have that moment uh, if you had met a girl that evening before. So I guess that goes back to what I was saying earlier, where you, you, when you start living more deliberately, and mm -hmm. understanding that everything happens for a reason and you are the creator of your own experiences so just and and, and just open yourself uh, open your opening yourself up to allow things to happen that's really what it's really all about one thing guys one that i want to touch on before we wrap this up is um dating you know a lot of guys have questions about dating multiple women um i've worked with several clients that had a lot of hang-ups around that deep-rooted beliefs you know that it, they can't see more than one woman if they have this connection they can only have it with one girl that's what's beautiful about this you get to do whatever you want in any moment i mean if you want to settle down you settle down if you don't you don't um but the biggest thing that i encourage all my clients to do is to get to a point in their journey where they develop that level of choice with women to the point where they can go out and actually have these insane amazing connections with not just one girl but multiple women and not just mm -hmm. not multiple women at different time periods or different time frames in your life but even during the same time that's so far outside most guys reality because you know of our culture and religion and you know parents and stuff you were kind of raised and taught that we are supposed to be with one girl and oh you can't date multiple women and girls wouldn't like that and whatnot but that's the ultimate choice and i guess that's where that's the essence of what's developing this level of sexual confidence is and, and having this freedom to choose. You have that, you have that ability to choose to pursue things with this girl or that girl or, in, or that girl. And you, and you also have the ability to choose to pursue them all together <laughs> <laughs> at one time, if that is what you desire. When you have that freedom of choice, that just magnifies your level of attraction as a man to women beyond every other man out there, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I struggled with that uh, a while, but uh, uh, I found out um, that if you are um, honest uh, with girls about that, this, if, when you tell girls that you are seeing uh, other girls, then you can get that connection. But uh, in my old days, I was not uh, honest about it. And then it became a struggle. And I think the reason about that is because 
you uh, start feeling guilty because you have a real good connection with one girl and then you go out with your friends. She trusts you about that and you uh, are playing with her trust. And that is the reason that you can get that connection. But then you, you are honest about uh, all this. Uh, I have now, I have girls in my life and I told them and in, in the beginning it was not easy. But I said uh, to them, um, I want to see more girls. I don't want to have that uh, that uh, relationship right now. I, I, I follow the program and I want to find out what's possible about it. And well, they found it in the beginning uh, very strange and they get angry with me. But after a while, uh, we came uh, along together and uh, they accepted it uh, in their own way. I don't know, like it, but they accepted it. And, and um, I stayed honest about it. If they did, did want to hear it or not, I, I had to say it before I go, went out. A friend of mine uh, said, Fun, you can do that. They say, I have to tell them that I want to see. And maybe I, I meet a girl uh, this evening, another girl. And when you do that, you you can create that connection, and uh, that's that, that for me that was the only way. And now I can connect with a lot of girls, but I always talk about it uh, to the girls that I'm seeing, and uh, that really works for me uh, on this moment. And maybe there uh, there comes a time that uh, there, that I will be with one girl. And uh, I will actually be exclusive with a girl, but then I made that choice. Yes. If you're going to want to be with multiple women and have different women in your life, you, I mean, you have to be honest. I can tell you how many just friends of mine that even today are struggling with that. They, they end up going out, they meet this girl, then they go out and meet this other girl, but they, they talk to each girl as if they are in a relationship with her. They mm-hmm. do relationship things. They go out to dinner. They send the girl flowers. They uh, send a good morning text and a good night text. If you're wanting to date and, and have multiple relationships, you can't treat it like an exclusive relationship. And it is absolutely critical for the success of the relationship. And it's critical just for your own sanity, because, I mean, I've got several friends, like I said, that, you know, are in that situation where they're, where they are not honest. And then next thing you know, they're in a heap of shit because they're not being, they're not being honest, but that stuff absolutely does eat you alive inside when you are not when you, when you aren't honest yeah i mean, feel that women feel that when you are uh, hiding something they just feel that you are not honest they 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 they, they tell you right away you 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 have a woman uh, at home and uh, if you're not honest about it they feel it and uh, it's not going to work but now when they say to me you have a woman at home or you have a woman or you have a girlfriend. I said, I don't have a girlfriend, but I have uh, girls in my life. And some say that's it's very arrogant, uh, but when I explain it, they, they even understand me. And, uh, and uh, this, some girls say, if I'm, I don't like that, but uh, I really like the fact that you're honest. Uh, not many men uh, are that way. Right. It's admirable. It's, it's respect. You know, and even if they don't like it, they will respect it. I mean, I I hear this from my girl all the time because she is a stylist. She's always talking to uh, women and, you know, it's a really common thing in today's day and age where guys, married guys will go on, create a online profile and go out with women and have sex with them and even start a relationship with them. But then they're married. And then all of a sudden, one day, the, this girl finds out that this guy was fucking married this whole time. I mean, that's just 
that's the biggest piece of shit thing that you could possibly do as a man. I mean, I, I feel like a lot of guys do that because they don't think that they can be honest. They get into a relationship with one girl and they get married. And even though they want to be with other women, they do it anyways, just because of the social pressure and all that jazz and pressure from family and all that stuff. But, but also, um, just not knowing that there is a world out there that you could live in where you could go out and you could have amazing connections and date multiple women. And, and, you know, you could have a different dated, you know, see a different girl every single day of the week, if you want, while being 100% honest. And I, I know that's mind blowing to a lot of guys, but it's the truth. You have to be truthful about what it is you want in order to be able to even start the process uh, of allowing that to become your reality. Yeah, that's right. The only thing that you don't uh, must do and uh, that you you can tell the girls that you are seeing other girls and that uh, be honest about it, but don't uh, get into details. Some guys I know, they want to tell, I don't know why they do it, they want to tell all the details what they did, and that's really, that. That's not respectful. I think you don't have to do that. You you only say that you see other girls, that you are connected with other girls, and leave it with that. It's it's more than enough because a woman really don't want to know all of that. And um, the other aspect is um, when uh, girls are texting me, and I told them. And that I not want a relationship. Sometimes I have to block them, and it's not because I I want to be an asshole or something, but I don't want to give them the wrong expectation. And to do uh, text you things in the morning, and I never respond on that. And uh, when I want to hang out with them, I just call them. And they know it's, it is that way, but women uh, keep trying. Um, and every day they try to, um, to see if you respond on that. But if you do that, it, it, then it's, it's not possible to see other women because the woman in place thinks that you have a relationship with her uh, while you said uh, that you won't. But your behavior acts that way. And it's very important uh, not to do that. Uh, I uh, had a problem with, yeah, in the beginning, but after a while, I saw that it was better for the woman. That, I mean, that is definitely something that many guys have struggled with where they say, they, they'll come out and they'll be honest and tell a girl, okay, well, I don't want to be exclusive with you. But then they turn around and their actions say something completely different and then they wonder why and then they get pissed off at the girl and say hey i told you that i didn't want anything exclusive why are you creating all this drama and making this big scene but mm -hmm. yet their actions spoke a hell of a lot louder than words mm -hmm. and and that's one of those things that you got to always remember when you're dealing with any woman is that your actions will always speak a thousand times louder than words yes. that really goes back to the you know what we were talking about earlier if you are coming from that scarce mentality and you aren't confident it's not necessarily something that you say or it is your actions and and your behaviors that women will uh on a, even on a subconscious level pick up on and be turned off by you do that you you have to man up and you have to let uh, the woman uh, um, go if she wants to go because um, if you don't want a relationship you must give her also the chance to meet uh, another guy if she wants a relationship with them but not uh, putting her online or uh, I don't know how you say that in English but uh, um, 
most of the men who wants to see other girls wants uh, want uh, the girls that they are seeing uh, to stay with them so they text them and uh, they want they don't want uh, to take the risk uh, to lose them but if you uh, are seeing uh, other girls you you uh, must let them go free if they want and have the balls to take that risk because uh, it's uh, because otherwise they uh, you give them all these wrong expectations and they cannot find another man uh, what they want because they they keep thinking uh, that things will work out with you and that uh, uh, there will come a day that you will let go of all the other girls. And uh, when I decide to go uh, exclusive with one of them, I can always say uh, say that I will do that. But they at least the other girls know that I was been honest with them. Yeah, I mean, I've found that with so many guys. And I mean, I even found it with myself, to be honest with you, <laughs> when I was younger, where mm. I wanted, you know, as a man, I wanted... I wanted my cake and I wanted to be able to eat it too. You know, I wanted, in other words, I wanted to date multiple women, but then I expected them to be fully into me and faithful to me. Yet I was going off wanting to be with other women. Well, that's not okay. I feel like that's one of those things kind of like in a level of maturity that we kind of go through and you know every man really does need to get to that point uh you know in his life in his relationship maturity not holding double standards the problem with double standards is the girl will end up developing and holding a deep level of resentment towards you and mm cause it just causes a lot of problems in the relationship but more so than even that just fundamentally for you and your own sanity as a man you need to let go of that jealousy sure there's going to be a learning curve and you're going to have to go through and there's going to be jealous feelings and stuff that that are going to come up but you really need to develop that level of uh deep sense of security with who you are and develop that more of an unconditional love for women you reach a point where you find pleasure and you get your pleasure from knowing that she is being pleased we talked a lot about a lot of really good stuff here and is there anything else that you would want to say to other guys out there that might be listening? Yeah, what I want to say is uh, that there uh, become times that you uh, that you are uh, uncertain, uncertain about the program. And I had those times, but I I, I only can say uh, it all works out. Uh, you are a great coach. I tell you that uh, many times. But it's a, it's a good program, and uh, but you have to trust uh, that it will work out and uh, things don't work out the way you think you uh, you would. Uh, your expectations are too high, but uh, I can only uh, tell the guys, uh, stick with the program, do what you have to do and don't think too much about all of this. And I can tell you, if you just enjoying life and do the things you have to do, it will work out, but it, it's not overnight, this program. It, it takes a lot of time. By me, my personally, it took two years before I really, really know what Corey and all the other guys who were successful uh, meant about this program. And um, it, it just comes to you you cannot plan it it it, it just comes uh, one day you go out and um, things just are going to happen uh, even when you go to the store uh, or moments that you don't expect things to happen uh, on very strange uh, moments in your life 
it just comes over you and uh, only then you ex uh, you you know and you know what we are talking about and uh, you just have to be patient that is what i that what i want to tell you be patient uh, things will happen and things will come if you stick with uh, the things that uh, this program tells you all right guys well it was great talking to you bro thank you for your time uh, for yeah. talking and sharing with the guys I, I appreciate that and i'm sure they appreciate it as well